Hi. What you're looking at on the workbench, or I guess I should say what you're looking at spewed across the workbench is a completely dismantled Music and Sound MC302 Master Station. And this is exactly as I left it yesterday afternoon at the end of the day, knowing that I was going to work on this again this morning. This set belongs to a fellow named Tyson who lives in Canada. And the story behind it is it was a completely working and fully functional system. And Tyson decided he wanted to install a Ring Wi-Fi video door camera. The result of that attempted installation blew up the MC602. I don't have all the details as to exactly what he did and how he tried to install the Wi-Fi camera, but the end result of it was that the MC602 went dead. I spoke with Tyson about this back in December of last year, that would be December of 2022, and discuss the ins and outs of what could possibly be wrong with it. But in a situation like that, since it's an unusual set of circumstances, it's impossible to know until you actually get it on the workbench to look at it and see. He decided that he had found uh, what he called a local guy who thought he could work on it and perhaps fix it. And he was going to take it there and let him attempt to work on it first before he decided to pack it up and send it to me. The local guy worked on it some and the report came back that he couldn't repair it because the chips in it were bad and he didn't have access to them so there was nothing more he could do. At that point Tyson contacted me again and filled me in on all the updates and said once I get it back from the fella I'm going to send it to you and see what you can do with it. I got it back a few days ago and because I'm always curious about things like this, I decided to do a little bit of basic intercom triage yesterday afternoon to see where we are with it exactly. I'm gonna editorialize slightly. Whoever this local fellow was, he didn't do this set any favors at all. He took it all apart, it looks like. He didn't actually work on anything, I don't think. Maybe he realized early on that it was hopeless and he couldn't really do anything with it, but he didn't really put it back together properly. It was missing a bunch of screws. It was missing a bunch of standoffs for the boards. And you know, come on, if you're going to take something apart that belongs to someone else, when you put it all back together, even if you're not going to be able to fix it, you should at least put it back together properly. That's the end of the editorializing. So what's wrong with Tyson's intercom? So this is sort of a laundry list of the things that are wrong with it at the moment. So we'll begin with his transformer here. This is a 24 volt center tap transformer, which means it has three wires coming out of it. It does have a fused center tap output and the fuse is blown so the transformer doesn't work correctly. This is the main audio intercom board with the tuner module attached to it. Oh, and the other local fella, he had this apart and he didn't bother to put the cover back on the tuner enclosure, which is not good. The AM FM tuner, this one has a problem. It'll scan tune and tune stations, but nothing comes out of it. So that may be repairable. We'll talk about the other bits and pieces that belong to me here also. He did send a chime module with it. This actually works, which is good. So we don't have to worry about that. The biggest problem here is this. So this is the microprocessor board out of an M, out of Tyson's MC302. Technical term for its condition is it's all jacked up. It has some kind of major fault in it and it is most likely the microprocessor itself that's damaged and without the microprocessor working correctly the system's never going to work right. So what I did yesterday and then this is my speaker. These are his faceplate pieces. It's just easier to take the whole thing apart and do it that way. So what I did yesterday was I substituted my, a good transformer, belongs to me, for his damaged one. I substituted another tuner module for this one, sort of bypassed it. I 
looked through the boards and things that I have and found another microprocessor board from an MC302. This one belongs to me, soon to belong to Tyson, and substituted it and I sort of Frankensteined it all together. This is my remote station. He sent a remote station with it for testing, but I have it hooked up to mine right now because we'll deal with his speaker later on. Got it all powered up and hooked an antenna to it. So let's plug it in. We'll turn it on. and it plays and it all seems to work correctly. The things that I need to do on this today are I need to replace the fuse in his transformer. I need to see if his tuner module is repairable. Then he'll get a replacement microprocessor board, put it all back together and at the end it should work. We've already proven that with this setup it will work so it's just a matter of doing the work to repair it and then putting it all back together. Let me show you briefly how the microprocessor board is supposed to operate. So the set is powered up right now and MC302s, they don't have a clock that shows up all the time. Surprisingly enough, you would think that they would, but they don't. So if we turn the power on, so sometime before turn the radio today, on, hear that. we can and when you do, tune all you have to do is be stations. Now, having said those things from my heart, and so forth. We'll turn the power off. It's a copyright thing. So if we push these two buttons together, we can access the menus in the MC302. So if we push them both together, we get speaker volume. That's the volume out of the master station speaker. And then, oopsie, it went away, it reset. And if we use the left button, it goes down. And the right button, it goes up. And then if you push them again, you have monitor and then intercom volume up and down and speaker volume. To access the radio functions, you have to turn the radio on and then you have music volume, speaker volume, bass, treble, loudness on or off, and back to the music volume. So it's kind of an unusual setup where they you have to push two buttons at once and then use each button to make the adjustment. So that's the way it's designed. So that's more or less how it's supposed to work. Now what I'm gonna do is put Tyson's uh, microprocessor board back connected to the set and you can see what's wrong with his. All right, so this is the original microprocessor board and let's see if we can make it do the weird things that it did yesterday. So when we plug it in, what you can see here is these segments in this area on the display, I don't know how well you can see that, it's kind of glary. Maybe it's better like that. You can see these segments here are partially lit up. You've got part of a plus, you've got part of some digit, you've got very faintly, I think it says, I don't know, it says something and then it looks like a seven, and then these little bars have lit up, lit up in the minus, and if we push the two button switches for the menus, it doesn't do anything. Uh, it says preset. And power doesn't do anything. Tune doesn't do anything. If we push the reset button, that doesn't work either. The reset button is wired in to reset the microprocessor and that's not working, so obviously it's damaged. So this is what you've got wrong here with his original board. Hi, I'm back. As you can see, Tyson's MC302 has been repaired. The first thing I did was I repaired his transformer with the blown fuse. The fuse is located under this plastic cover right here with the label on it that says, warning, fuse secondary, do not short. So apparently somebody shorted something along the ways. Here's the actual fuse that came out of his transformer. It's a little miniature two amp jobby. Uh, it's an axial fuse, which means it has wire sticking out of each end because it has to be soldered onto connections inside the transformer underneath the plastic cover. I repaired the AM FM tuner on the back of the set here, and now it works correctly. I replaced the microprocessor board with the donor board that I had in stock, uh, put it all back together and checked and made sure that everything worked correctly, and it does. 
So let's go ahead and ring his chai module to start with. We'll do one note first. And then two notes. And finally three notes. That works fine. The intercom works correctly. The way I have this set up is I have one remote station and it's connected to a door station over there at the end of the workbench. These are the intercom buttons on the master station. You have room, listen, and talk. And if we do talk, it comes out through the remote station. And then if we push listen, that works correctly also. To speak to the front door, door talk is both buttons down at the same time. And we release the buttons. It goes into door reply. Big feedback there because the speakers are so close together. So that works correctly. On the remote stations, you have the same intercom buttons here. You have talk and listen and both buttons for door talk. And door listen. So that works well. We'll go ahead and turn the power on. Radio plays both AM and FM. We can raise and lower the volume. We can switch the inputs. We're going to put it on auxiliary because we can't play the music. Uh, otherwise, we get one of those copyright strike things. Uh, you have your preset buttons for your 8 AM and 8 FM radio station presets. And it, it all works. So it was a good repair. It was an interesting repair. It's the most blown up MC302 that I've gotten to work on so far. Hopefully there won't be a lot more of them that are this bad. I hope you found this interesting and hopefully for someone it will be helpful. If it is, give it a thumbs up on YouTube because that helps us just a little bit. There'll be a banner right here that shows you how to subscribe. Go to our YouTube homepage, click on the bell. And when you click on the bell, click on it to receive all notifications. And every time we post a new video, you'll get a notification and you can watch it. That's all for today. See you on the next video.